Hey G2, welcome back to another video. I'm so excited to be with you today. Today we are going to be speaking about the power of questions. We've just come off of our greatness series where we covered many, many videos. I think it was seven in total about uh, greatness, about what great people do, about how to uh, uh, become great in your uh, area and the things that God has gifted you in. If you haven't seen that series, I want to encourage you to go ahead and go and watch that. But today we are going to be talking about the power of questions. Questions are really powerful. Questions are an incredible skill to learn. And I want to encourage every single one of you in today's message about asking questions, asking the right questions. I want to show you some of the positives about asking great questions and the negatives about not asking great questions. And we're going to go through five questions that I try to ask myself often that have actually just changed my life. They've really just transformed the way I do things, the way I live, and I want to share them with you today. So as always, I definitely recommend that you get a notepad, you get a pen, you get something to, to write with, to write on, uh, and uh, let's get straight into it. So questions are really, really important. Today, I want to speak about embracing uh, a lifestyle of asking questions. When I think about questions, I think about not knowing. I think about having a question. I think about seeking an answer to a problem or finding a solution. How many of you have ever been in the classroom or in school or in some sort of a, a, a setting where there have been people around you and you guys were covering something and you didn't know what was going on and you had a question, but you were too embarrassed to raise your hand and to ask the question and get informed? I'll be the first to say, I did that when I was in school. I did that when I was growing up and I actually regret it. I, I, I was more concerned about looking uninformed than being uninformed. But I'm gonna tell you this, it is far better to look uninformed than it is to actually be uninformed. If you can get over yourself and over the anxiety and over the sense of, oh, what are people gonna think and actually decide, I am gonna become better today because I am willing to ask a question that no one else has the courage to not only will it benefit you but it will benefit the people around you and that's what we're called to do as Christians hallelujah so we need to embrace this lifestyle of asking questions and being curious and confident and having enough courage to ask the questions even if it makes us look uninformed in the moment like I said it's better to look uninformed than actually be uninformed second thing I want to say is that we only get answers to the questions that we ask I promise you this right now, if you are battling to figure something else or you are confronted with a problem, asking the right questions is 50% of winning the battle. When you begin to ask the right questions, you will get the right answers, which will give you the right solutions to help you to be able to move on. So what is this in context to? What are we actually speaking? When I speak about asking great questions, how does this apply to your life? Well, we just covered school. And I would say this is one of the biggest ones. If you are faced with a challenge or something you don't understand, be courageous enough uh, uh, to, to ask the questions. Ask your teacher, uh, ask a friend. Don't be ashamed that uh, people will make fun of you or, or you think you're gonna look stupid. No, I'm telling you right now asking questions is powerful this has relevance to your family uh, if you have questions that you want to ask your parent don't be afraid go and ask them make sure that you are getting the most out of the questions make sure that you uh, when you're in the pursuit of knowledge and answers are thinking about the great way or great ways to ask questions it's a habit of getting in uh, uh, they the lifestyle of asking questions of people around you, asking questions of yourself. And it's so good to stop and reflect in the form of questions. So we're speaking about school, we're speaking about family, we're speaking about faith. Coming to the Lord with questions is a huge one. This has been one of the greatest things in my life is coming to the Lord freely with questions that I have about myself, about Him, about other people, about what's going on, even though I have no idea what's happening and just surrendering myself to the Lord in the form of of questions. We grow when we ask questions. So people who do not ask profound questions or people without profound questions tend to be uh, people who receive shallow answers. They tend to lack confidence. Okay, they have poor decision making. I promise you that's true. Uh, they're always sort of in a mental fog. Uh, they work on low priorities. So they do uh, uh, 
the right things at the wrong time or the wrong things at the right time. And they are uh, people who tend to be immature in their processing power. We don't want to be those people. We want to be people who ask profound questions. And people who ask profound questions uh, get profound answers. They get great answers. They live life with a confidence. They become wise decision makers. Uh, they have clear focus in life. They focus on high priorities and they are mature when it comes to processing. This is the result of asking good questions. Whether you're sitting down with somebody older than you, with a teacher, with a mentor, with someone who you look up to, asking them questions that are relevant to your life are amazing things to do. And uh, we're gonna move into five questions that are really great questions that I ask myself and that I wanna encourage you, G2, to ask yourself. But first, I wanna uh, give you a little bit of insight into something. Think about this. Millions of people saw the apple fall, but only Newton asked why it fell. And as a result of that question, we now have an understanding of gravity. That's just one example of how questions have literally changed the world. The world that we know, the world that other people know, and I want to tell you today that questions have the power to change your world for the better. So these are five questions that I continually ask myself, even though I have the answers to them. I ask myself these often because they keep me even keeled, they hold me accountable, and, and they, 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 they sober me out when it comes to my life and what God is doing with me. Question number one, am I investing in myself? This I categorize as the personal growth question. It's important that you have a personal growth question because I'm asking you that legitimately. Are you investing in yourself? Well, I'm going to say the fact that you're watching this video today, uh, I, I will say yes, because this is an investment into you, who you are and who God wants you to be. So are you reading books? Are you getting better? Are you seeking out answers to the questions that you have? Are you going before the Lord? Are you growing in your relationship with Jesus? Are you investing in yourself? That's question number one. Question number two, am I investing in others? Others. This is the leadership question. Am I adding value to people? Am I making the lives of those around me better because I'm in it? Am I investing my time, my virtue, my resources, my energy, my insight, my wisdom, my words into other people? I can confidently say today, yes, I am. And I want the same for you. You can do it with your family, with your siblings, with your parents, with your friends, with your peers, whoever is around you, you can invest in people. Number three, what am I good at? This is the competency question. Once you figure out what you're good at, I find it is incredible how God uses your strength to direct you into your purpose. What am I good at? Once you figure out your strengths, your weaknesses will also become obvious and you'll be able to uh, uh, either stay away from that or build people around you to be able to cover those aspects in your life. When you figure out what you're good at with people in sport and academics, in whatever it is you're doing, whether you're a great chess player or you're great at math or whatever it may be, when you figure out what you're good at, what you're interested in, if you're good with people, the Lord uses that and he directs you into something that has great impact on people. That's a very good question. It's a competency question. What are you good at? Number four, what do I believe and what do I believe in? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the faith question. I ask myself this often. Uh, and you may say, well, Christian, you're you're a youth pastor, you're saved, you've been following Jesus forever. Why do you ask yourself this? Well, because it's a constant reminder uh, uh, that I'm not living for myself. What I believe in is greater than me. It's greater than my wants. It's greater than my desires. It's even greater than my needs. What I believe in has the ability to transform people. This is a great question to ask yourself because you will always find the answer to this and God shows up every time. Question number five, who am I and why am I here? It's said that the two greatest moments in a person's life is the day they're born and the day they find out why they were born. I ask myself this question continually, not as often as the faith one. Uh, this is the identity and purpose question. But this serves as a reminder of who I am, why I'm here, and just how important God sees me. Uh, just how special I am, how loved I am, how much I belong. I know that my identity is in Christ and I know that everything I do is for the purpose of Christ. So having this question in your back pocket is something that will continue to grow you and feed you and encourage you and make you better. So G2 this week, I want to challenge you every single day during the week 
ask yourself one of these questions on day one, ask number one, day two, number two, you get it, so on and so forth. And by the end of the week, I want you to reflect on this list and I want you to go before the Lord and I want you to just kind of pray this list for yourself. The Lord, am I investing in myself? How can I invest in myself? How can I invest in others? Lord, what am I good at? What gifts and talents have you given me? What do you want me to excel in? Uh, Lord, help me in what I believe and in what I believe in. And I thank you, Father, for revealing my identity to me, who I am and why I'm here. Once you've done this and if you uh, take this seriously and you pray this for a week, I promise you, uh, by the time next week rolls around, you will have more clarity and you will get into a lifestyle of asking better questions. And there may be a part two on this video, but we'll do it later. Uh, but let's just pray together as we end off today, G2. Lord, I want to thank you so much that you've given us the ability to ask exceptional questions. Lord, we want to become great for your glory. We thank you, Father, that you are forming us, Lord, that you are growing us, that you are helping us to become all that we can be, Lord, for your will and for your glory. We thank you, Father, that you have given us the grace, Lord, to be able to wonder, to be able to be curious. And we thank you, Father, that every question that we have, uh, 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 Lord, can lead to um, a form of answer that brings us encouragement. Lord, and we thank you that you help us to become great question answers. Uh, ask us, Lord, so that we can become more competent people, more caring people, people who love people, and people who are, uh, are courageous enough to share with other people. Thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Love you, G2, and I'll see you next week.